Hey, I'm Jill Riley from The Currents Morning Show here at Minnesota Public Radio, and it's time for another virtual session with an artist that you've been hearing on The Currents, and I'm very happy to be connected to Laura Marling and Mike Lindsay, and together they are known as Lump. And their second record is on the way soon. And we're going to chat some more. Uh, but first, I wanted to welcome both of you to the virtual session. And thanks for putting together these uh, these performances for us. It works so much better instead of having you grab an acoustic guitar and try to, you know, play in front of a screen. So it's uh, it's nice that you were able to, to record some videos for us. So uh, thanks for joining this virtual session today. I hope you guys are well. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for thanks for having us. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's talk some more, um, but let's let's get into this first song here. Um, the title track from the new uh, Lump record, which is called Animal. And this is the song that we've been playing on The Current. So uh, folks tuning in right now might recognize this one. But let's check out the virtual session version here on The Current.
Well, that's a performance video of the song Animal by the collaboration Lump, and that would be Laura Marling and also Mike Lindsay. And uh, thanks for joining for this virtual session today. Uh, again, thank you for joining. It's um, It's been nice to continue this way of connecting with uh, musicians and bands as uh, in the time that we're still living in where we can't have you actually come into the studio because, well, you're across the globe right now. But it's it's been nice. It's been nice to, to connect with folks right now. Um, so Laura and Mike, welcome. Uh, I just uh, want to say congratulations on that new record, which is due out shortly. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, for anybody who doesn't know, you're, uh, I know we've probably got a little bit of a delay going on, which is, you know, the, the cable is very long to England, I'm told. Um, but for anybody who doesn't know your, your backstory, um, you know, Laura Marling, we know you as Laura Marling, singer-songwriter Laura Marling. Um, Mike, you're in a group called Tongue, but I wonder if you could talk about how you started collaborating together. And uh, Laura, if you want to start, and then, um, yeah, Mike, if you want to just go ahead and jump in. Yeah, so um, we met a couple of years ago when uh, a mutual friend, my guitarist, um, a very talented man, introduced us at an after-show party after one of, one of my gigs. And Mike um, came up to me and said, I want you to come and sing on something that I've been working on. And usually I would politely decline and uh, walk away. But for some uh, reason, I said yes. And uh, I was familiar with Mike's um, oeuvre, as it were. And I went into the studio the next day and we ended up making the first Lump record um, in the following like couple of weeks. So, and it was totally out of the blue and totally random and we didn't know each other very well. And Mike's musical world is very different to mine. Um, and then we ended up touring that album. We loved it and we loved playing it live. And then completely unexpectedly, we did it again. And here we are. So it's been, it's been random so far. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just how Laura said it just now. I mean, um, I've been a fan of Laura's for a long time, since the beginning, since since you first started releasing records. Um, and then I uh, just saw this opportunity to um, ask if you wanted to do some tunes because I was in the same room as you, which was pretty rare. Um, and it wasn't just any gig. Laura was supporting Neil Young at the O2. It was pretty amazing. Um, so, uh, and we happened to be bowling as well while we are doing it. So. Um, so it all started with a sort of bowling match. And that was good. Uh, you know, you, you caught her at the right time, you know, probably, you know, flying high off of a, a gig where you're playing with Neil Young. Um, but then to be able to, you know, find that opportunity to just ask and then, you know, you just never know what's going to happen when you just say yes to something, which is kind of the, the, the beautiful thing. Um, so when you started recording together and you didn't really know each other, um, I guess, what did that kind of atmosphere contribute to, you know, kind of being collaborators when you haven't really had the time to really, you know, kind of feel each other out, but yet you've kind of established, I would assume, some roles in a collaboration. Um, you know, how did, or like you said, it was kind of off the cuff, but how did those maybe um, roles in the collaboration uh, come together? Because it sounds like it happened pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I've, I've spent the majority of my career saying no to things. Um, in I don't know why you know I'm quite an uptight person maybe or whatever but I I, <laughs> I like to keep things quite contained and I like to keep the the Laura Marling world quite distilled you know quite simple and I just had reached a point in my life where uh, I was totally ready to completely relinquish uh, any responsibility I guess and and Mike really provided me with that opportunity because he had the music written he had the he had the sort of sonic palette ready. And I just like something about not knowing somebody very well as well, especially if you're a slightly shy person, 
uh, adds a kind of tension in the room that means you can be quite like you can kind of indulge in in weirdness and um, the first lump record was surprised me with its weirdness you know it was so unlike anything I'd been able to access before lyrically and um, that's a huge relief obviously as well because it's not tied to a persona that that's been well established um, so that was that was it for me what about you, Mike? Yeah, I don't. I don't think there was any um, any discussion at all. Still, isn't really about uh, um, who would take on which role. But I think it just the precedent was set that first time you came in the studio for that first record. And I, I actually, it sounds like I had loads of things ready to go, and you know, I was very on on it. But actually, I was. Um, I was sort of blagging it really, and and I kind of ha had a, a um, some really I thought beautiful music that was originally for a pitch for a film that didn't work out, and I thought and because Laura came to the studio within a day of meeting her, and I, I didn't think that was going to happen, I just started playing her this this track, which became the first track on the first album, Late to the Flight, and I think because that just clicked so so beautifully, and you uh, were clearly inspired to come up with those lyrics that were un, un Laura Marling-esque. Um, uh, I feel like those boundaries and those roles were kind of set and then we just kept making more more music like that. You'd come to the studio, we wouldn't talk, we'd make music, you'd leave. Um, and uh, and that was how it went. And then we became rock and roll stars. You do the math. <laughs> so as you started working together, at what point did you have the discussion of, well, we need to name this something. What are we going to call this? How did that come to be? So the, the week before Mike had, like really weirdly and coincidentally, the week before Mike approached me, um, I'd been playing a different show and I was sound checking and I was just line checking some drums. And I had brought my five-year-old goddaughter with me because she loves that kind of stuff, obviously. And... Um, and so her and I were hitting the drums and I said, what, what should we call our band? And she just put her drumsticks up there and she was like, lamp, like screamed lump really loudly. Um, and that was, and that was it. And then I, you know, next week I was in the studio with Mike and we were clearly halfway through making an album and lump, lump reappeared into my brain. And I thought that's perfect. Upside down name. <laughs> Yeah. yeah well it's so it's, it is perfect because it's so it's perfect that that um lower uh named it because it has such innocence and you know uh, this kind of um immediately felt like a character like rather than other associations with the word um so it it, it completely um gave a world for us to start working in um suddenly we thought well maybe lump is a is a being is a, is um you know, a sort of a, a um, amalgamation of, of our fused personalities or something. Um, so it's good. It's a really handy tool to have to, and to finish working with a record. And then we had the visual element to go along along with that. I'm talking with Laura Marling and Mike Lindsay. Together they are Lump. And after getting some background about the project, um, I'd love to talk more about the new record. Uh, but first, let's check out another one of the uh, the performance videos that you all put together for uh, this virtual session for a song called We Cannot Resist. And uh, and again, I want to leave you enough room to talk here because I know that we're, we're, we have a little bit of a delay between us. Um, so if I'm quiet, it's only because I'm, I'm listening to your answer. Um, but I wonder if, if you could kind of both chime in um, with, uh, you, you know, a little bit of background on this song, We Cannot Resist. After you, Laura. Well, um, it's sort of, it's like a classic kids on the run story um, with a little bit of lump wonk in it. Um, there's like, there's there's a couple of words that I was, I mean, for, for this album I was using, for the first album I was using the Surrealist Manifesto and, um, so, and uh, Nonsense Poetry as like lyrical jump off points. So the whole, the, the thing that's become apparent in Lump is that it's like very, I'm trying to twist 
stories so that they're a bit wonky. And uh, so for this one, I was using psychoanalysis as a, as a jump off point. So there's a couple of things about hedonism and drive and desire and objects and things that you libidinally invest in. And so this song's all about kind of libidinal investment, I guess. And uh, it's particularly vibrant in uh, teenage uh, desire, I'd imagine. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I don't just imagine. Trying... That's what mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for, yeah, for me, it's it's also this combination of sort of pop music versus um, some kind of uh, something very dark that's kind of constantly fighting with it, and um, so it's kind of three songs in one, and uh, those moments that those kind of chanting "We cannot resist" moments are um, uh, taking that song somewhere else, and, and that that sort of the underworld coming coming through the cheeky storyline that's how i see it all right well let's check out this performance video it's a virtual session here on the current with lump
Hey, it's the Currents Virtual Session with Lump. I am uh, connected to Laura Marling, and I'm also connected to Mike Lindsay for this virtual session. Um, we got a little backstory of the collaboration of Lump. Now, the new record, Animal, which we've been playing the title track here on The Current, uh, the new record, Animal, is due out on July 30th, which, believe it or not, is right around the corner. Um, so, you know, getting some background from both of you, you know, this was something that happened in the studio the first time. Well, when did you... Um, when did you realize that this wasn't just a one-off thing, that you wanted to make another record together? And um, and when did that happen? I mean, I think in the timeline of the past year and a half, it's so hard for me to piece together <laughs> the past year and a half because of, you know, a global pandemic. But when did you get together and um, and, and where um, to, make a, to make a new record together? Mike? Um, yeah. Um, well, we... Uh, started to get the um the you know the, the the vibrations of of lump speaking to us again at the beginning of 2019 at least to me again um and i think i uh at that point sort of got in touch with you and said I'm, i might think about starting to write some new music um which which was probably about a year a year after the the, the first record came out um but I think it all, I mean, we hadn't planned to make any more music. It was just supposed to be a, we didn't know really, maybe a one-off collaboration, but um, we did some shows, some live shows, and that kind of took on a whole new form of lump and it became kind of bombastic and shoegaze and wild and exciting. And uh, I think that kind of paved the way for, maybe we should try and make some more music um, based on some of those feelings that we, achieved on the live show so um i had started to get some things together at the beginning of 2019 and then laura came that summer to margate where i live which is on the east coast south coast of england uh it's full of sort of smugglers and pirates proper <laughs> and um and and so, you know, Laura, when you um, when you went to to Mike's house to uh, you know start working on some new music, um, you know, how did that feel? You know, being able to go to a place outside of the studio. I mean, it's a home studio, but I imagine that it can feel a little, maybe a little more relaxed when you can show up to your you know your pal's house to make some music. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny actually, because it was like, it was very much mimicked the first record in that I would sit behind Mike and sing, you know, I'm like singing nonsense lyrics over the top of the music that I've heard for the first time. And I'm trying to pull melody out of out of it, um, which is a very easy task when the music is, is so great. Um, so it, like Mike has a cat, as you can see behind him, that's where I sit. Um, uh, so Mike has like always got his back to me and I'm always like saying really random things into a microphone behind him. So it's quite similar to the psychoanalytic setting. You can end up saying some really weird things without really meaning to, um, which is quite, quite good, quite useful. Yeah, it's almost like you have, I mean, even kind of a, a bit of a <laughs> Sigmund Freud setup there where you, perhaps you were laying on the couch and sharing some of the things about <laughs> the subconscious and, you know, maybe Mike turned around and said, Laura, tell me about your mother. And <laughs> maybe that's how some of it came out. <laughs> um, so, so I guess just for a, a little perspective on what was, you know, going on you know, if this was 2019, um, Laura, were you working on your solo album at the same time or was this kind of independent of that? I was, I was, I was sort of doing them both, which is, which was interesting. It was actually really useful 
to have two very clear different voices um and i've been i've been waiting to make song for our daughter for quite a long time for various boring reasons so i was i was really sort of done i was like in the process of literally recording the album so i was just all the writing had, had been done but the laura marling voice occasionally turned up in the lump setting and it was really clear the difference between the two you know like i guess traditional songwriting in the style that i do it's very sincere and it's a very sort of you're trying to tell a really concise narrative story and lumps um almost apathetically insincere and is trying to tell a really wonky story that that doesn't make linear sense so it's quite obvious when the wrong voice arises um but thankfully it didn't happen very often well, I think it's really incredible that, you know, you as the songwriter, lyric writer, that you can, as the person, can separate or identify them as two different voices. I mean, that's pretty incredible. I don't, I don't know a lot of people that can do that. Well, I've done a, a lot of psychoanalysis to help me deal with that. No, um, no it's... it's, it's, it's um, it, you know, I, I, I started Laura Marling as a songwriting entity when I was 16. So there's quite an established um, line that I'm I'm following, which is good. I'm very grateful for that line. Sometimes it goes slack and that's a bit scary, but usually it's, it's quite tight and I understand where it's going. And then Lump is this totally, this thing that's totally out of my control. The music's written by somebody else. And so you're sitting there waiting for that um, environment to, to call itself into being you know lump has this oh no we're, we're a bit <clears throat> uh prophetic about lump i guess but because it's such a special a, a successful collaboration such a special rare thing especially when it's done without cynicism and you know we're clearly not in the business of writing pop hits um where we really do it because it's magic and um so it's a great experience for us i'm, I'm very grateful to have it I mean, it's quite it's quite hard to write pop hits, you know. So um, we probably would would if we could. No, we don't write pop hits because we're not physically capable of doing it. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's almost like you can you can kind of leave that aesthetic to um, gosh, who am I thinking of? Of like, in R and George and Greg Kirsten, the Bird and the Bee, they do it very well, you know. Um, but it's it it was interesting the the first time that that I had really heard of your collaboration um, was this new record. And I kind of had to go back and, and and read about the history of it. But um, that song, Animal, I played it and I went, gosh, that voice sounds like Laura Marling. <laughs> and I was, and it was really cool to, to, to be able to hear, you know, almost, you know, that, that familiar voice, but in a completely different context, you know, in a completely different form. So, you know, I imagine that it's it's got to be a little scary, but uh, freeing at the same time to be able to do something out of maybe the expected um, the expected zone, I guess. Yeah, it is. I remember when the first album was coming out, I, I had a huge wave of, I guess, anxiety about um, the fact that it was revealing something that I've never revealed before. So I didn't know what to expect the feel. You know, it's not like I was, I reveal far, far more in my songwriting, my more traditional songwriting, but something about stepping out into the, oh, sorry, that's my dog. Um, stepping out into the unknown is, and doing something a bit weird and out there that's clearly not going to be for everybody. Um, is scary. But I'm really glad, you know, it's it's a great, it's good, it's good to push yourself to the edges. And I had a somewhat of an experience with it when I worked with, um, well, I did a, my sixth album with Blake Mills, who was, who who created, he did a similar thing. He created, well, I mean, he was using my songwriting as a starting point, but he created this extraordinary sonic world, and um, it puts you in this really amazing headspace where you can be something else, and it's quite scary. Well, before we wrap up, um, for one of my favorite parts about um, doing these virtual sessions and connecting with people <laughs> wherever they are in their own homes, um, we have met so many 
dogs and cats and every other kind of animal. So Laura, if you could, could you introduce us to your dog? I mean, who who is back there commenting on your music? He's just wandered <laughs> off annoying me. He's a very unfriendly lurcher. Hey. <laughs> He's gone. He's very, uh, very shy of the spotlight. Just likes a good wine in the background. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just to add, just to add, maybe two cents. And uh, Mike, do you have any animals roaming about in your home studio there, or, or are you all alone right now? Um, no, I mean I'd love to get some kind of snake or iguana or some kind of uh, <laughs> dinosaur. Uh, that that would be great. But um, no, just me. Oh no, I do have this actually. Yeah, sorry. Um, I do have this butterfly. Beautiful. Uh, all right, all right, yeah. And the butterfly, but stays rather silent while uh, <laughs> while you're doing your uh, your press and your interviews. Um, Laura Marling, Mike Lindsay, together they are Lump. Um, now, are you going to be able to tour? Are have you made plans to get on the road? And um, and if yes, um, you know, you talked about Lump kind of being a visual thing as well. Uh, what are your plans when you can actually get this show on the road? I mean, we're hoping we've got shows booked. We're, we're rehearsing and getting getting the show together. And I spent the pandemic uh, mostly building an eight foot puppet out of tool, like tutu fabric, um, to for our live show. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll we'll be. I mean, it's. It's crazy here right now, so who knows? I mean, I hope for the sake of the entertainment industry in, in the UK that shows will continue, um, but who knows? Mm. At some point, Lump will be on the road. Yeah, I mean, we have we have, we have a few shows in, in England and, and a festival and things coming up in, in sort of early autumn, so hopefully they'll still be, you know, uh, full and, not yeah. not full of other things um so yeah but it'd be great to come out to america one day you know yeah so you say but uh, it would be I nice to have you I mean, yeah i mean things are starting to to open up and gosh a few weeks ago i feel like we just kind of pulled the band-aid right off and um you know like you know the clubs here in the twin cities are are opening the theater shows are being booked and festival shows are on the books and so i know at this point it's just yeah. we're keeping our fingers crossed you know for for everyone you know for the musicians for the crew for all the people that work at these venues that we're going to move forward in the right direction so yep when the time comes it would be nice to uh to see you guys here in uh in minnesota in the great US of A. Uh, Lump, Laura Marling, Mike Lindsay. The new record is called Animal and it's due out on July 30th. And I know we have one more uh, video to show. Uh, thank you to engineer Eric Romani and producer Jesse Wiza. Again, uh, that second album is called Animal. And uh, Lump, thank you, Laura and Mike, for joining me here for another current virtual session. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us.